Hello everybody, and welcome back. This is Ian for another Doctor Who review. Today I'm going to be doing The Ice Warriors, and I'm very excited to get to this episode, as it will be my first second Doctor review, who is my favorite Doctor. They was introduced to Doctor Who by the modern series, as I wasn't alive when the original series was coming out. But as I went back and watched some of the classic episodes, I found that uh, I really do like the, the second Doctor. So without further ado, this is story number 39, The Ice Warriors. Spoilers once again, and there's no logical order with which I'm doing these, these reviews. They're really just the ones I own, the doc uh, episodes I own, the, uh, I think it's about 10 episodes I own. I've done about half of them at this point. But... Anyway, so, this episode is basically about, there's, like, this, like, an ice age, since there's overpopulation on Earth, so most of the trees have been cut down, and so there's no carbon dioxide, so it's, like, the opposite of global warming. The, the temperature's cooling down, and it's gonna be a second ice age, and everything's going badly, and then there's this project using this thing called the ionizer to melt the, to make, melt the ice, and at least carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. However, it's not working very well. And it follows as the Doctor... I think this immediately follows the Abominable Snowmen. So, as this happens, the Doctor lands and the Ice Warriors, which are these people from Mars, these warriors from Mars, land... Oh, no, no, they don't land. They're frozen in the ice. And as they and the doctor becomes part of this project to uh, do the ionizer. Meanwhile, and uh, so they find this one ice warrior in the ice, and they bring him back to the lab and unfreeze him. But uh, he he's still alive, and he captures Victoria because this is another episode with Jamie and Victoria. Um. So as he captures, so as he captures Jamie and Victor Jamie, not Victoria, uh, not Jamie, Victoria, sorry. <laughs> um, so he captures Victoria, and then he goes and frees all his all his buddies from the ice because this is Varga the leader, and he uh, uh, unfreezes the other four. Uh, I think it's Zon Zondar, Tuvok, no, not Tuvok, Turok. Uh. Rin Rintan and East Eastboard, I think they are. Um, and Zondal's the second command. So basically what happens is, one by one, and a lot of people die to the Ice Warriors, but then ultimately their ship blows up after it gets hit by the Ionizer, after the Doctor gets it to work. Gets it to work. So, overall, I really liked this episode. It was... Very interesting episode. It was six parts. <clears throat> Probably could have been a bit shorter. Didn't drag, but just the plot was very circular. Or, <sighs> like, the same thing kept happening. Could have been condensed just a little bit to make it a little bit more... Well, actually, I don't really... It's just a con uh, just an observation I had that it could have been shorter. But I'm glad it wasn't too short, because there already is a shortage of Patrick Trout and stories as there as there is, as this is missing episodes two and three, which they did do an animation of them, and the animation was quite good, uh, better than, like, the, the animation they had for the invasion. I think definitely would be an excellent idea for, especially the first two Doctors, should be animated and released as, like, a TV series, like, a TV series, like it, should, like it was supposed to be, like, because I, especially episodes like Fury from the Deep is an episode I really want to see. There are just so many episodes that I want to see but can't. Power of the Daleks, Evil of the Daleks, Fury from the Deep, Celestial Toymaker, Faceless Ones. All these really good episodes that uh, we don't have anymore because the BBC destroyed them uh, back in the 70s, 60s, late 60s and early 70s. But, this is a very good episode. Um, some ep some characters, all the characters are very well developed. Ex except for, like, uh, especially uh, 
the command the commander uh pet uh scientist pen lee uh and store the 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 scavenger the ice warriors aren't really developed that much you basically get that v Varg Varg the leader Zondel's the second in command and the other three are just kind of random they're just kind of there and so overall uh the characters just keep escaping and getting recaptured by the ice warriors and then the ice warriors take over the base and then they're repelled from the base it's it's a bit of a it's it's there's a lot happens but it's not confusing really like uh there are a lot of characters and they're all like it's even like the characters that are hardly in it at all like Arden like these characters that aren't in it for very long, they all, uh, except for the exception of like Walters and like, well, well actually, the only one I, person character I can think of that doesn't really have any development is Davis. That's because he doesn't have lines; he just falls into a chasm, like the first episode. But, um, yeah, I just found the acting was very good, especially uh, uh, the one person that really stood out to me with excellent acting was the commander of the base. I forget, I can't. I'm, I always, I, I, I always forget, hate when I forget these names. Clint, Leader Clint, that's what his name was. He's the one that really stood out to me with excellent acting. Um, and the second Doctor is still very funny. Uh, I just, I have always loved him just for his, his humor. He's kind of, makes everyone underestimate him, and then... Like he he kind of he's kind of small and scruffy looking. Who you call it scruffy looking? But he's just kind of, and he just kind of he acts kind of uh, clumsy like and kind of like an idiot. And his enemies tend to underestimate him, and then he comes back and annihilates them when they least expect it. Like and just the way he acts on screen is just amazing. And I love Jamie, one of my favorite companions. It's just... It's so sad that these episodes are missing. And the cliffhangers were great. Um, and I really just... There aren't any... There aren't any... Problems I have with this episode. It's, it's, a, very, it's a very solid episode. The... I'll be... Although the ending was a bit what you expected. It's a bit like uh, an unearthly child where you kind of knew how it was going to end. How they'd avert the disaster. But overall, I would rec definitely recommend this episode. Um, it beat out The Web of Fear as my favorite Patrick Troughton story. And I would recommend this episode and I'd give it a 9 out of 10.